Hi everyone, welcome back to the Walther's Switch Machine series. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make your indicator lights turn green when your crossover is in the closed position and in the thrown position, making your operating experience perfect. Your own happy place. If you missed episode one, be sure to check that out. And don't forget if you haven't seen already my installation and review video on the Walther Switch Machines. A quick recap. I installed a crossover and added switch machines with indicator lights and I currently have yellow lights indicating closed turnouts and I want them to be green. What I'm about to show you is no secret. The information and details can be found in the instructions provided by Walters. But if you're like me and you skip the instructions and search how-to videos on YouTube, then you might appreciate the following. As you can see, there are four color modes. I want green to indicate a thrown switch and a closed switch and I want no yellow lights at all. If you have the patience and the time, I recommend you experiment with the combinations and find the one that's right for you. On the actual switch machine, you can see that there's a spot for color mode. If you want green lights, all you have to do is connect the two little teeny weeny jumper pads beside the word green. And the same goes for yellow. Adding a jumper is tricky. You can just put a small dab of solder on the pads and that will work fine but Bill Lace recommends use a small wire so that if you don't get the result you wanted, you can just cut the wire. So I tried that and I tried again and I was almost successful, but my soldering skills aren't the greatest and I decided to take a leap of faith and just added the blob of solder. I hooked the wires up and... Green lights instead of yellow lights. I am so happy. I am so pleased. And I am so nervous about securing my switch machine back in place. I originally struggled to get these switch machines in place and I was hoping I would never have to remove them. Soldering under the layout wasn't an option, so I removed the main switch that houses the wires for power and the panel. Just as I feared, reinstalling it was not simple. I really had to fiddle with it and adjust it and then readjust it and then finally, I got it back to where it was. So now I have my crossover back and operational. I have green lights to indicate closed turnouts, and I have green light to indicate two thrown turnouts, meaning the train can move from track to track. In closing, it would have been nice if there was a small switch or like a little plug that you could adjust instead of creating a jump between the pads using solder. But overall, this process wasn't too hard. I will add, when I first hooked the wires up, and the lights turned green, the switch machines themselves did not work. And after a small panic attack, I just walked away, called my dog, came back, hooked the wires up again, and everything worked. If you are thinking of installing these switch machines on your layout, I recommend you test them and the lights before crawling underneath your bench work. Thanks to Bill Lace, my collaborator, and thanks to you for watching. Until next time, cake tear. Come on, get in the hole. Why didn't you just get in the hole? That's your hole. You too good for your hole? Answer me.